Hello, welcome to Module 2 of the introductory sessions on Implementation Science, brought to you by the Implementation Network from Ireland and Northern Ireland. My name is Kira Hickey from the Centre for Effective Services. This is Module 2 and focuses on determinants and strategies. In this module, we will look at implementation enablers, implementation barriers, implementation strategies and implementation teams. We will learn more about these topics during this module, but first let's briefly recap on module one. As discussed in module one, implementation is the carrying out of planned purposeful activities that aim to turn evidence and ideas into policies and practices that work for people in the real world. It helps create systems that facilitate change to close that evidence to practice gap. It's about putting a plan into action, the how as well as the what. The implementation determinants and strategies. Fixon and Al have developed a framework of the three overarching drivers in implementation. These are the engines of change. They're the competency drivers, organisational drivers and leadership drivers. When these three core components are in place, they provide the support to establish and maintain the successful implementation of a programme or approach. Implementation drivers are interactive and compensate for one another so that a weakness in one component can be overcome by strengths in another. For example, staff may not have experience when dealing with data and data gathering or analysis, but by providing them with training, this can compensate for the skills that aren't present yet. Likewise, these drivers are integrated, so the goals, knowledge, skills related to the new programme are reflected co consistently across all implementation drivers. Leadership driver. Leaders motivate individuals to adopt changes and overcome challenges in the implementation process. Leaders provide vision and support in overcoming challenges. Leaders champion the project. They drive quality, promote feedback and communication. Typical activities that leaders undertake include those that focus on relationships, so they would communicate with staff. They complete activities that focus on change, like communicating the vision regularly, reinforcing the goals. Leaders also complete task oriented activities, like organising leadership meetings. The organisation driver. The organisation is the context in which the innovation is being implemented. The organisation needs to intentionally develop organisational supports and systems that create a hospitable environment for new innovations. The organisational supports for innovation need to be evident across multiple levels of the organisation and work together. The competency driver. This relates to the mechanisms to develop, improve and sustain practitioners and supervisors ability to implement a programme or innovation. These drivers relate to those responsible for the implementation of the intervention, the people who will be doing the work and taking st steps to ensure that they have capacity to do it. The competency drivers relate to recruitment strategies. Do you have the correct selection of staff? Do they have the right amount of training or do you need their, to build their capacity to undertake the work? Are they offered continued support through coaching, mentoring? Innovations are not self-implementing and for innovations to be used consistently with fidelity, with reliable benefits, all three competency drivers need to facilitate and support the implementation process. Implementation enablers and barriers. Enablers are factors that increase the probability of successful implementation. They help facilitate change. Barriers are factors that reduce probability of successful implementation and are a challenge to the implementation. Having a clear understanding of the implementation enablers and barriers helps to identify the most effective way to implement your in innovation. Implementation science has highlighted a number of enablers which increase the probability of any intervention being successfully implemented.
This slide indicates common enablers and indicates at which stage of implement implementation they require most attention. Taking the time to identify your enablers and utilising them will increase the pace and effectiveness of implementation and also sustain interventions over time. Different enablers can be used at different stages in the implementation process. However, some enablers like stakeholder engagement, leadership and resources sources need to be attended to at every stage. Barriers are factors that reduce the probability of successful implementation. In the real world, implementation will always experience challenges and barriers. Research highlights three particular barriers, the external environment, resistance to change and vested interests. Within the external environment, maybe the existing structures are not in line with the intervention. Are policy and funding patterns not aligned with what you're trying to implement? Resistance to change. Change is challenging. People may have experienced too much change and are change fatigued. They may have had negative change experiences in the past. Implementation needs to plan how they are going to engage with people and how they're going to bring them along with them throughout the implementation. Vested interests. These are organizations, professions, practitioners, managers who may not share the same goals or visions as those leading the implementation. This could be resistance to change as noted above, or it may be ethical, professional or practice related concerns which need time to be understood and addressed. If you think about your own organisation or team, what might be potential enablers and barriers to implementing your innovation? If you want to take a moment to reflect, press pause. An implementation strategy can be viewed as the how of implementation. It is the methods and techniques used to enhance the adaptation, adoption and scale up of a program or practice in a sustainable way. Research on implementation strategies is still emerging, but there is consensus that longer term, multi-level implementation strategies are more effective than those that rely on a single action, example, disseminating information. Discrete strategies are standalone actions. They often rely on information sharing, for example, sending emails or providing leaflets, giving one-off training, and have been shown to have limited impact on people's performance or practice. Multifaceted implementation strategies combine two or more discrete strategies, example, training, coaching, review, and consultation. Sometimes referred, these are referred to as active approaches. They are more effective than the more passive, discrete strategies. Implementation strategies should be planned and purposeful. Implementation appears most effective when the implementation strategies creates a facilitative environment with the key implementation enablers working together. Powell and all compiled a list of 68 implementation strategies and have grouped them under six processes, plan, educate, finance, restructure, quality management, and attend to policy content. The combinations of strategies utilized should be tailored to address multiple contextual levels and target individual, team and structural policy level. Implementation strategies can be delivered top down. This is when a decision and action plan is agreed by management. Information and changes are then communicated through a hierarchical structure. The planning and decision making occurs at a high level in the agency and the innovation is implemented without much room for adjustment or input. An example of this would be distributing educational materials or mandating change. A bottom up strategy is a decentralized approach where new initiatives are instigated by stakeholders from the ground up. This approach involves more collaboration across all levels to determine how to achieve the goal. Research would indicate that successful implementation often depends on striking a balance between top-down leadership 
and support for bottom-up system change. Powell et al. conclude that we need more research on implementation strategies. Their review suggested that no single implementation strategy represents a magic bullet and that implementation stakeholders would be wise to consider the challenges and barriers specific to their practice contexts, tailoring implementation strategies to address them. Currently, there is little evidence about how to choose strategies and how they work and what the mechanisms are. The importance of context. The role of context has been identified as a key determinant in implementation success. Context can be described as a set of circumstances or unique factors that surround a particular implementation effort. The context in which a project or service operates can be positively or negatively affected by factors such as political support, traditions and ways of doing things that are very well established, staff and service users willingness and ability to change, funding levels and how partners and delivery work together. So the key question is, what are the factors within our setting that might make it challenging for us to implement the thing we want to implement? If you want to take a moment to reflect, press pause. Implementation teams are a core group of individuals who have special expertise with innovations, implementation and implementation strategies. They are accountable for guiding the overall implementation and move the project through the implementation stages. The implementation team lead change and provide guidance to others who will be impacted by it. They build internal capacity in the organisation to manage change. The team is usually multidisciplinary and need a range of skills and expertise. An effective implementation team requires the time, skills and decision-making power to drive implementation. Implementation teams should not be confused with other groups or structures such as governance groups or steering committees. These teams are involved in overseeing and managing the implementation process. Implementation teams move the project through implementation. They typically have some decision-making authority, but rely on other governance structures for major decisions. They should have direct access to decision-making authority so that timely decisions can be made to assist with implementation. The implementation teams focus on quality, collaboration, strengthening of enablers, database decision-making, Align, alignment with funding and policy, and problem solving and sustainability. To summarise, implementation is the how we put a plan into action. To increase the likelihood of a successful implementation, you need to analyse enablers. The enablers are factors that increase the probability of successful implementation. You also need to look at barriers. Barriers are factors which hinder how you will do things and they will help you understand the context of where you are working and assist you in tailoring your plan and identify which combination of strategies will lead to the most successful outcome.